going to begin this hour with an inside look uh, at the hunt to catch this kind of an appropriate transition. One of America's most <laughs> notorious serial killers. In 2018, Joseph D'Angelo was arrested for 13 murders and dozens of rapes that terrorized California in the 1970s and 1980s. D'Angelo, better known as the Golden State Killer, was caught by detectives using public DNA databases similar to Ancestry.com and 23andMe. It was among the first times the technique was used to catch a killer. And the idea came from Paul Holes, who spent nearly 30 years on the case working in the Contra Costa County Sheriff's Office and the District Attorney's Office. In his new book, On Masks, My Life Solving America's Cold Cases, he talks about that case and many others. The book is out today. Paul, thank you for being here. Yes. Thank you for having me. Uh, the book is getting rave reviews. People love it. I love it. it it's like, it starts like a Raymond Chandler novel. Uh, it, and it's like, it's, it's more entertaining than fiction, yet also darker than the darkest noir. And it's got your personal life in it as well. That's what I like. It's really... <laughs> so how did you decide like, how cool. to balance these big public cases, that story, with this personal story you also wanted to tell? Well, you know, as, as I was reflecting upon my career, it, I started realizing it was important for me to write this book so the readers can understand that there's real crime behind this true crime content that they're mm -hmm. consuming. There are victims that have suffered. There are professionals like myself that are traumatized by these types of cases. And so that's really what I was trying to put out there. And to put the personal stuff in, I mean, that was a lot of soul searching because I'm a very private person. Yeah. And now it's like I'm opening myself up to the world. It's out and it, it is out there, Paul. But the thing that was so fascinating to me is that you didn't appear to realize the emotional trauma that you were going through because you're seeing some very, very gruesome very grisly, despicable stuff. You didn't seem to realize the effect it was having on you. No, I didn't, because as you walk in and you see something horrific, yes. you, you bury it. I've got a job to do, and then I got to keep doing that job, and then another case comes up. But as time goes on, and I didn't find this out until after I retired, every time I'm working one of these cases and seeing that stuff or seeing the emotional impact on, on the families, it's a little nick. And then after after decades, all those nicks, you start your bleeding wives, out. Your wives, Paul, they tried to tell you. They they did, you know, and... and we the, should say you're married now. You, uh, I am married yes. now, and I, 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 I have a first marriage, and an ex-wife, and both of them have said, and, and, and indirectly, you know, the relationships, the, the struggles. I wasn't realizing sometimes, you know, why these struggles were existing. Well, the job had an impact on me. Well, you were doing the job for decades, yes. so it, it would have and an impact. And doing it well. And doing it well yeah. and finding yeah. all these people. You know, it's got to be odd, though, too, that true crime has become just such a place that people turn to. You're even a sex symbol. I mean, there, there's a hashtag, hot for holes. What is <laughs> One of the better hashtags <laughs> out there, I have to say. <laughs> there's, there's T-shirts you can buy all over the Internet, it's you know. It's surreal. It, is yeah. it? I mean, and, yeah. and what is... What, what does that say about about our interests in these things? Well, you know, I think, you know, for true crime, it's, it's, it is the ultimate human drama, you know? And so, of course, everybody's fascinated by the stories behind these cases. But also, what's interesting to me is that the predominant consumer of true crime are women, you know? And I've talked to many women, and it's like, for mm -hmm. them, well, who are the victims that are these stories are about? Well, it's usually women victims. Wow. And so they're like, you know, I want to know what happened. I'm, empathetic to that victim. I understand. I relate. But also, how can I avoid that happening to me? Yes, right. that's the thing. But cold cases are your thing. You yes. said you became obsessed with the uh, Golden State Killer, but cold cases are your thing. What makes you so good at this? What do you see that other people don't? Well, you know, part of, you know, my career is unique having the forensic science, behavioral, and investigative uh, knowledge wrapped up into one person. And so when I walk into a crime scene, I'm able to reconstruct that crime scene based on the evidence. And then now I'm seeing what happened between the offender and the victim. But other people have done that too, though, Paul. They, 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 they do that. But, you know, for whatever reason, I, I think because I relate to the victim so much and then I disturbingly can put myself into the offender's mind and see what the offender is experiencing to help me assess this case and who it is I'm trying to find. And then that goes back to the disturbing aspects of the trauma, is kind of reliving being the offender. Wow. I, you know, go ahead. I, I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, so much uh, of the message you receive from, from people in life is just move on, mm -hmm. but to investigate cold cases is the very opposite. And some of the cases you were working on weren't even assigned to you, you just were interested 
Where do you think that deep interest in these old wrongs comes from? Well, there's, there's really, it's, it's, it's twofold. One, it's the, the ultimate challenge, you know, trying to figure out, you know, who committed to this crime. But also, I have become so obligated to the victims. And the audacity that somebody took this victim's life yes. and then has continued to live a normal life since, that person doesn't deserve that life. And so it's go, I went after him. That's what gets me about Joseph James D'Angelo, the Golden yep. State. You said he's a father, a grandfather, a fishing boat in the driveway, a Volvo in the garage. All right. Just your normal kind of guy. That's what freaks me out about well, and, and these, cases. These, these predators, they can compartmentalize their lives. Yeah. They look like a normal person. Oftentimes, they're not who you think they are, right. you know? And, and, and D'Angelo is a perfect example. Perfect example. And that little quote there is a perfect example of the tight writing in the book. It's a really yeah, great yes. read. Yeah. No, no, when Jamie, you said there's hot for holes, when I went to meet him outside, he said, we have some hot for holes people in the studio. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> there's right. about 10 of them there. Went, okay. Paul, Paul, Paul <laughs> we got to say. Cracking jokes is we how got... he deals with the trauma. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much. For being here. Uh, hot for Holes hashtag on mass is available now. <laughs>